What if I told you there is an app that has high, high res satellite imagery, mesmo analysis, surface OBS. It has radar, warnings, lightning data. Well, that app exists. It's called Satsquatch. And today we're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna go inside the app. I'm gonna show you some of the views I have customized and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So let's, I don't even wanna, there's nothing else to say. Let's just look at this thing. Now we've taken a look at Satsquatch a few times in the past, but they have done a lot of updates this last year. That's why we're making this video because you should see everything this app is up to. And today I'm excited to go inside of it and really just uh, show you everything that's going on. It's, it's fun. It's, I, I'm having way too much fun with this app as a weather nerd. It's ridiculous. Now, of course, the other thing I have to say is not sponsored. So I just do this. I like highlighting cool weather apps by smaller developers who deserve your money and inattention. I wanna see these apps grow into something great, okay? So I'm rooting for the folks at Satsquatch. I love the app and I wanna talk about it more thoroughly. So let's, let's, let's just go. Now we're getting into it, let's go. Of course, the first thing I wanna say is sorry for the messy desk, but just endorsing the iPad with the keyboard. It's awesome. That's what I'm using in case you're wondering. So this app is incredible. I wanna show you a few of the views I'm using. First off, you have default views too. You can load presets and there's so many default ones that are just great, okay? I love it, they're great. But the power is the user presets, okay? I love the user presets. Here's my default view. Uh, just gonna throw it on there. Uh, this is the one I'm usually opening the map up every time to. It saves your last setting now. So your, your, the last thing you looked at is going to pop up again. It's gonna be great, same spot, everything. It's all saved. That's a huge improvement over the last year. Can't say enough how big of a quality of life improvement that is. Um, and my default view is very simple. I show red, visible satellite imagery mixed with surface OBS. Of course, I put my temperatures in red, my dew points in green, and the only thing I'm regretful of at this point is maybe my temperatures all needed to be a little bit brighter red. I'm probably gonna fix that before I hit the road, which is gonna take way too much time now, but that's okay. Um, I basically built this view and then built everything else on top of it, so this view is where like the, the color scheme came from. Uh, for everything. The winds are the Titan yellow. I love it. I love this view uh, so much. It's just very basic, but it also is very instructive if you're just wanting satellite imagery. I think having surface OBS over satellite imagery at all times is important. And that's my default view. It's very simple, but very effective. Now my next view is, this one is also, let's go over to show, uh, is just the radar. Uh, piece of this because this app does allow you to also see radar. I overlay it with the um, uh, visible satellite imagery just because this is a satellite app uh, originally. The radar is MRMS, so it's not like the per station. These folks are doing such amazing work. I wouldn't doubt if per station comes into this eventually. Um, but the MRMS, this is like built for big picture weather analysis, right? So this is perfect for that. This is almost like an old school AWIP station where you can do all kinds of stuff. It's, I love it. Old school, it's probably, yeah. Anyways, um, so you, you obviously MRMS, you can see it's basically just a radar composite of the entire country. You can see radar from all over the country, zoom in to problem areas, see what's going on. I love that view. Hey, I hope you love this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Let's get back to it. And the only thing that I really have a a bit of a qualm about is like, I wish that this would stay checked. That's, I think that's probably a pretty simple fix. So they'll get that done. They're going to get that done and it's going to be great. But I, I wish that I could just disappear all the other views and only show my user presets. So this next one is radar with lightning okay and this one is what it sounds like as well all i basically did was add lightning data on top of it and of course you can see the lightning strikes all the little uh uh crosses there they're they're just all right there you can see them 
Uh, newest ones are in yellow, oldest ones in red, and you can see it across the entire country. You can zoom out and you got light, lightning data from the entire country. Look at that. I, I think that's cool. For someone like me who, who likes just like looping radar and seeing everything going on, this is like a treasure trove, okay? This is like, it's like a dream come true. This is stuff that like 12 year old me would have dreamed of having this little computer, this tablet, this screen in front of me with all this weather information, uh, I would have sat there for hours looking at it like I do today. So, uh, but I was more bored back then. So, uh, but yeah, you can see how the lightning uh, animates with it, how it will change colors with time, that sort of thing. So I'm a huge fan of that. Now let's go into, uh, now I'm going to get into uh, uh, some more mesoanalysis. Here's where I start throwing in things like I keep the satellite image on in the background. You notice red visible has been on through almost the entire time here. And I have temperature and dew point loaded up here. And this allows you to see the temp and dew point. I find this view very important to do a little bit of teaching on dry line days because typically where the greatest moisture return meets the greatest uh, heating behind the dry line, that's where the storms are going to fire. So if it looks very uncertain where storms might go, that's one trick. It's just like, it's the simplified method, the center simplified method. We'll go with that. I'll name it after me. But uh, uh, yeah, I think that it's definitely like, it's one way to see where storms might form. You can see this front actually draped across here. Uh, there's a front draped across the southern plains today, and, and that's going to be a focus for some severe weather. Later on today, it'll happen. See where this uh, moisture return, there's a little bit of a uh, a return here, a little bit of a, yeah, that's going to happen in here. It's gonna That's going to be where it's at, and you can see where those clouds are already. So I like uh, that view as well. Temperature two point, I use that all the time. Then we get into three kilometer cape and effective SRH. This is what I call, where are the tornadoes going to happen today view? Uh, and this is more toward when storms are getting ready to happen as they're happening. This is a good view. Right now, like in the morning, I'm, it's 10.50 is when this is being recorded, it looks like. Um, it's not the best, okay? But as you go through the day, it gets a lot better. Uh, but you can see in the blue is the effective SRH. Uh, you see 50 here. Uh, and then you see the uh, three cape here in the red. Where those two overlap, I look for for the greatest tornado potential. I love effective SRH because it takes the effective inflow layer and the uh, helicity in that layer, which I, is proven to be a very good disseminator of uh, tornado potential. Okay? Uh, and then, of course, we got to go uh, very classic ML cape versus ML sin. Um, I think uh, ML cape versus ML inhibition, this is... A uh, really important view for wanting to see where the best sensibility is, where the cap might be eroding, that sort of thing. This is done via mesoanalysis. Sasquatch has amazing mesoanalysis. I actually prefer it over SPCs on the figures that are actually available. And so I love that. And what what I've done with this view actually is I keep the cape 100% uh, opacity, but I've actually lowered the opacity on the inhibition because otherwise the screen really does get too busy. Uh, and so I've lowered that. So the blue is where the inhibition is. You can see at minus 50. There's a little hole right there as a sample by mesoanalysis, but it gets stronger as you go out. And that allows you to see where that sort of stuff is happening, where, where the inhibition is, where it's maybe eroding to give way to uh, the uh, mean layer uh, cape and such. So I use this uh, for evaluating whether the cap is eroding or not. Another one I look at, come on now, is we go down here to uh, just very simply VTP. This is the final tornado parameter. Over the last year, I've really become a fan of this as a good overall like composite. If I want to use a composite to look for like tornado potential, I think VTP is real a lot better than STP at showing better areas versus worse areas. It's just like it's more sensitive to environmental changes, I think. It, I feel like it's just really good at pinpointing it. Um, it's one of those things where, and I'm looking to see if there's even any in the country today right now, and it does not look like it, but it would be uh, red circles. But it's one of those things that 
I just think that when you look at it as a whole, it's hard to argue against uh, this as a very simplified method for looking at the environment as a whole. I've got these other views that you can look at. Obviously, the three cape and effective SRH would do would point to the same area almost always as the VTP. But just so you know, VTP, I, that's my composite indice right now for looking for areas of uh, tornado potential. Come on now, I, I can't, apparently cannot hit the uh, thing. And of course you have nighttime satellite too. It's not nighttime, but it is an infrared view. It works during the daytime as well. I like using this one right here for the nighttime. It just, it allows you, it's just the classic infrared view, which is the brighter the colors, the colder the cloud tops, the stronger the storm. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, you probably, if you've watched weather at all, Weather Channel or anything, they've used this and they've talked about that very thing. But the thing I love throwing on top of it is the lightning. Uh, and I do this, this is probably more my default nighttime view is the lightning with this, because that really gives you a good uh, indicator of if a storm is thriving, because the more yellows you see, the more lightnings there have been. If you can see a lot more red and orange, that means the storm is probably weakening, like here. There's a lot of lightning here, but now it's uh, it's all getting older. But here, the cloud tops are brighter than down here, and you can see a lot more yellow, so a lot more recent lightning strikes. So it just lets you see, kind of evaluate storms in a different way at night. You can see all this on radar too, right? But this is just like a way to kind of confirm something one way or the other as well. And I like that a lot. So another view, some more views I'm using. Uh, here's one. I'm using this uh, radar with warnings and watches. On this one, uh, I also still have everything available here. I don't know what happened there. I think I went to default uh, default radar view. Oh no, no, it's there. We're good. Calm down. So this one, I don't think there's any warnings out. That's the problem. So we're not going to be able to see any of those right now. Should have recorded this in a couple of hours. <laughs> I, might, I might try to pop in. Right here, I'm popping in something that shows those warnings and watches as they happen. And you can see how that looks as well. Uh, so that's me. I'm not even going to cut this. That was just fun right there. So that, that shows that. Um, but, but this allows you to see the warnings and watches as they're happening as well uh, with the radar, with the satellite. I think that's just a cool view. And then my final view I have customized so far, I'm probably going to do a few more in the future uh, as I think this through a little bit more. But I call this my big weather view. This basically is satellite, all the possible warnings, radar, surface obs, and this allows you to see things like heat advisories, all the winter weather stuff, all the uh, temperature stuff period, uh, shows freeze warnings, red flag warnings, heat, excessive heat warnings, all the things. So like if I'm just wanting to talk about the weather uh, in any meaningful way, you can just, I could do something like this. I could animate this map. I could show, it shows the surface obs changing. It shows, uh, the radar changing, the satellite changing, even will show the warnings and such. It, it just allows, it's just this cool view. If I could really, I really think I want to put this like on the big computer back there, like at some point to talk while I'm talking, because I just think this is a cool view. This is a cool view. It lets you see the country and, and the weather going on. I am just like, this is where weather nerd me really just gets excited because you just see everything. I don't know. I just love this. So this is, these are like a few of my views. I, I keep a very simplified workflow too. You might notice I don't have a ton of views. I don't need to look at a ton of stuff, but uh, just like, for instance, if we wanted to, you, you just go to add map player, you select your product category, say you want to go to mesoanalysis. You've got all these options. You got pressure. You've got all the capes, all the, you got LCLs, you've got uh, lapse rates, you've got SRH, you've got Supercell, Composite, SIGTOR, Violent Tornado. All these things are there. There's, it's really kind of just like a weather analysis dream hub. And there's so much that you can uh, run with. And of course you can just, I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. But here, you can like zoom in, you can see the uh, text for the advisory. This works with watches and warnings as well. And I just love it. I love this app so much. Uh, I just wanted to show off some of the things. 
Uh, you can get this. It's on iOS for sure. And there's a premium version that allows for all this. Uh, I do ask, like, if you're going to do, if you want to really follow the weather and have something in your hands, this is available for uh, iPhone and iPad both. It allows you to really dig in. And I think that supporting small developers who are doing amazing work is important. And that's why uh, you should. You should pick this up and give it a go, okay? Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, every subscription really makes me happy, but also helps us continue to grow this channel. So we can do cool stuff like this and show off cool apps and show you things. Uh, there's a lot more that goes into looking at whether I wanna do a whole lot more education over the next year. So, so subscribing helps. Also become a member, it's the greatest way to support this channel. Another way to support this channel, well, that video popping up right there on your screen right now, be sure to watch that one. Remember, weather's for everybody, that includes you. We'll see you next time.